eggnog, cheese baskets, and poinsettias. We're talking about the holiday season, how Cal Poly is getting you ready for it. Logging team members give us an inside look at how they prepare to compete in a sport that very few have heard about. And a dance studio started by a former Cal Poly student takes on hip-hop and contemporary dance. Broadcasting from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, you're watching Mustang News. Thanks for joining us on Mustang News. I'm Olivia DeGenero. And I'm Julian Delgadio. Mustang News starts now. The Cal Poly Athletics Department is drug testing more athletes. This change is because of an armed robbery involving five Cal Poly football players over the summer. Police say the incident may have been drug related. Half of the 550 athletes at Cal Poly will be randomly drug tested by the end of this quarter. Players are drug tested for any substances banned by the NCAA. The Athletics Department is now also checking for a legal drug found in prescriptions like Xanax and Valium. Some Cal Poly athletes don't think drug testing is such a bad idea. Well, depending on what your state of mind is, you might think about doing it, but knowing that you could potentially lose your eligibility and not be able to play a sport that you love would be a good deterrent. So I, mean, I think it's only going to help reinforce a positive interaction. Students who fail a drug test will only be excused if they have a valid doctor's prescription. Cal Poly students have reported more sexual assaults this quarter than any previous quarter. SAFER has received more than 40 reports this quarter, double the amount of incidences for the entire 2013 academic year. They have also provided crisis counseling to over 90 students this quarter. However, not all students coming to SAFER are reporting recent incidences. Reports range from assaults in the past to ongoing abuse relationships. SAFER coordinator Sherry Love says this could be because of the confidentiality change made last June. One of the biggest things when you ask how come we don't go to the police is really um, the person has that privacy and that confidentiality is so key for someone to um, feel safe enough to come forward. The campus climate survey conducted last year found 5% of students have been sexually assaulted during their time at Cal Poly. SAFER has requested more staff and a men's peer mentoring program to help with the growing numbers of reports. On campus bike thefts this year are fewer than last year, but the number's still high. More than half of the bikes stolen are near residence halls. The second most common place is by the library, according to University Police Department statistics. Majority of bikes stolen are not registered, but according to UPD Chief George Hughes, bikes being registered cannot prevent them being stolen. Bike registration process or helps in the process of returning stolen bikes that are abandoned, which happens pretty often. University police suggest that students register their bikes and buy the best locks they can find. A history lecturer is discussing her newest book in the library. Kathleen Karens will be discussing her latest book, Hard Times at Tehachapi, California's First Women's Prison. There will also be a question and answer session about the book. The event is on December 5th and is open to the public. Coffee and light refreshments will also be served. Cal Poly's Graphic Communications Institute has a new director. As director, Lindy Singh will provide leadership and direction to the institute and oversee all GRCI program activities. Singh is succeeding Professor Emeritus Harvey Levinson, who retired in October. Levinson also served as the interim head of the journalism department. And it's nearing the end of the quarter, a time when the library gets pretty packed, but Kennedy Library has started a new system to fix overcrowded computer labs. PolyConnect labs now have electronic sign-ups for computers. The system was made in response to student feedback. Before, students waited in line until a computer was free, but now students are guaranteed a specific computer within an allotted amount of time. Yeah, it, like, it like has your name like in line, and it like gives you a rough estimate for you know how long the wait time is or whatever, and then it tells you when you're up, like which computer to go to. Seems simple enough. Although this does not solve the library's lack of resources, it is part of the school's effort to accommodate student needs. And coming up after the break, the Center for Community Engagement is trying to reach its goal of receiving 230 gifts for kids in the area. We'll tell you how far along they are. Plus, on-campus bike theft numbers pretty high this year. University police give us some more facts.
you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Moscogee! Only you can prevent wildfires. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. <laughs> Got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Cal Poly students are raising awareness about the mass kidnappings of 43 students in Mexico. On Tuesday, they held a memorial for those Mexican student teachers that disappeared on September 26th in the Mexican state of Guerrero. Event organizer Fernando Sanchez said the incident shows the importance of protests because people around the world are reacting to this crime, but some people are not as aware as others. Not only students, but faculty and just, you know, people in general. A lot of people didn't know, and I felt like this is such a big thing, you know. Everyone around the world is reacting to it. Why aren't we? The Mexican government is still investigating the case. It is believed that a mafia group shot the victims at gunpoint and then burned their bodies to erase the evidence. <clears throat> the Center for Community Engagement is hoping to see the remainder of the children's gift requests fulfilled by the end of their annual gift drive this week. The CCE received around 230 gifts in total um, this year from five local nonprofit organizations donating gifts to children in the area, ranging from ages 1 to 18. The four Christmas trees decorated across campus from the ASI offices to Cal Poly Canyon Village have gift tags with the gift requests that volunteers can use to buy donations. We still have, I guess, one third of the tags still out, so. Um, could use all the help we can get. Although the CCE needed gifts for one nonprofit by Wednesday, they will be accepting gifts until December 8th. They asked that the prices from the gifts range from anywhere between $15 to $20. The CCE will be will use money from its own budget to buy gifts for the remaining gift tags not taken by the end of the drive. And the holidays are being greeted by tasty treats. The Cal Poly Creamery is making eggnog for the holiday season. The eggnog specialty can be found at the university's campus market and village market along, Cal Poly, along with Cal Poly's chocolate and chocolate milk and cheese. The eggnog is also sold both Spencer's Market in Morro Bay and Santa Maria. Gift packs are also being sold online at www.calpolycheese.com. And, and the gift will gift packs come along with three bottles of Cal Poly wine, 12 ounces of cheese, two bars of chocolates, and a Cal Poly branded corkscrew. Sounds pretty delicious. The Information Services Advisory Board is offering a new faculty award. The Learn by Doing Scholar Award is given to faculty who have researched the Cal Poly motto, Learn by doing, of course. The award is worth $2,000 and an additional $1,000 award will be given out to recognize outstanding applied research. Applications open February 15th in 2015, that's next quarter. For more information, visit the Kennedy Library's website. After the success of its pilot program last summer, the Orphala College of Business announced that it will be continuing the new expert, the Next Experts program, rather. Next Experts is a program that gives Cal Poly business students who concentrate in marketing and management the opportunity to consult with professionals in the industry. 
The 12-week pilot program allowed five students to participate. These students had a group phone, group phone calls with various CEOs, producers, and marketing directors where they were able to engage in discussions about the industry. We would have sent in questions before and they would answer those questions. And then from there, if we had a few more questions, they would answer those as well. They were set for half an hour. They also had one-on-one -on -one calls with professionals. They specifically chose, that specifically chose to advise them on their career and future. A lot of it was business, but then when you got to like the personal stuff too, it's pretty cool to be able to like, they not only wanted to like help you, they like cared about you and they wanted to see you succeed. The first official Next Experts program will take place in spring of 2015. And we did tell you bike theft numbers were up. We already told you that, but police department does suggest that you get a good lock because bike thefts are... You really need one nowadays. I mean, you can't be too careful out there. And they actually have an auction. I think at the end of the year they just had one where they auction off all of the bikes that they, they take in that are stolen or that are received without a lock. And so it's a great deal for everybody on a budget. But, definitely. Uh, now I think we're going to take a live look at Pismo Beach. And there it is. Still pretty cloudy out there. Doesn't look much like beach weather, but we'll tell you what your forecast is after the break. to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Job looks perfect. Uh, it says you need people skills. Check. Uh, driver's license. Check. And a high school diploma or GED. Skip the drama. Get your GED. I got that. You are good to go. Take that first step towards a better future and sign up for free classes now at yourged.org. It's been kind of rainy out there. Yeah, it's been it's been rainy, but good news about the rain is that we need it because we we're in a drought. And it also, if we get enough of it, the hills turn green. A lot of people haven't seen that since they've come here to Cal Poly because we've been in a drought That's for true. so long. It's been so dry out there. But uh, Ben, is is this gonna is this gonna continue? Hi guys, yeah, so for your weather today, our weather headlines, uh, it's been pretty rainy, but it'll be clearing up into the weekend. Uh, it'll be mostly sunny during the day and partly cloudy during the night, and we're gonna have light winds throughout the week. And oh, there we go, <laughs> today's weather uh, for this Thursday, highs of 67, lows of 52, raining as we already said, scattered showers and mostly cloudy at night with some south winds at 10 p.m. All right, and for <laughs> uh, along the coast, we got 63 in Paso, 67 in Atascadero, 67 in Los Osos, 64 in San Luis Obispo, and Avila Beach, it's another 64, and at Royal Grande as well. And when we head south down to Napomo and Santa Maria, we got highs of 70. And for our five-day forecast, as you can see, it's gonna be raining Thursday and Friday with highs of 67 and 50, lows of 52, highs of 68 and 50 on Friday, and it'll be clearing up on Saturday, highs of 70, it's gonna get a little bit warmer, lows of 50 at night, 
Um, and it's going to be partly cloudy for Sunday and Monday with highs of 69 and 70 and lows of 50 during the night. And that is your weather. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ben. And I guess we're going to have to soak up as much rain as we can because we're not going to have it for very long. Well, I guess it'll be nice while it lasts, right? But uh, moving on. It's that time of year, and the Cal Poly Plant Shop is getting into the holiday spirit. The students raise annual poinsettia sales to start this week. The holiday flowered plants are grown by students in the university's poinsettia agriculture enterprise project. The growing process starts in the spring to be ready for winter sales. Students use tarps to trick the plants into thinking it's a different time of the year, so they grow into different holiday colors. Uh, there's red, orange, uh, lots of whites, some mix. Um, we have we have pots where you can have one of each color if you'd like, and then we can paint them too, believe it or not. Flower arrangements are sold from anywhere between $6 to $150. Sale profits are split between the Cal Poly corporations and the students involved in the Poinsettia Enterprise Project. Poinsettias are now on sale as of December 1st. And that's a great gift to get your family because there, there's so many of them. They're so beautiful and they're pretty inexpensive. Yeah, for the most part. But All right, coming up after the break, find out what students are doing for sport. is hard. Damn, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoa. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. And we have uh, Michelle Logan here in the studio to talk about sports. How, how's Cal Poly doing? Well, I'll tell you. So starting out with women's or with men's soccer coaches being announced today at 3 p.m. in a public conference. The new coach is nationally renowned according to athletic director Don Oberhelman. The conference will be held in the President's Suite in Alex G. Spano Stadium. Now the Cal Poly women's basketball team picked up a 79-73 win on the road against Santa Clara on Tuesday night. Ariana Elgato made all 12 of her free throws and finished with a game high of 16 points. Freshman guard Dylan Leo Pepe matched her season high with 15 points and also pulled down seven rebounds. Her twin, Lynn, also added nine points on the night. After the win, the Mustangs are now four and three overall this season. The Mustangs' next game is Sunday, December 14th at 2 p.m. against Mount St. Mary's in Mont Athletic Center. 
Moving on to men's basketball, Menlo College will be at Ma Athletic Center on Saturday. The Mustangs are setting, sitting at 2-3 this season after two losses on the road trip. The first loss was 72-52 at Cal, and the second was 82-56 loss at St. Mary's. Looking ahead to the home game Saturday, Menlo College is at a 1-7 record this season. After the matchup with Menlo College, the Mustangs are headed for another two-game road trip, starting at Fresno State. And the Cal Poly logging team teaches students how to compete in timber sports. Multimedia journalist Sam Doty takes a look at this uncommon sport. I come from Indiana, um, out of state here, and you know I grew up doing stuff like this, um, you know, using axes and chainsaws and stuff. But I never really heard of timber sports, and I saw it on TV, and then I saw it out here at the logging unit, and I was like, that looks awesome. Go. You get to be outdoors, it's amazing company, and you're, it's physically challenging. I think that's, that's definitely a big draw to the logging team. It's an unusual sport that not many people get to do. Burling is a competition where two competitors stand on a, uh, a log that's about 12 feet long and about uh, 16 inches in diameter. It's just fun. A lot of people, like, you look at it and it looks pretty easy. It's just a log in the water, you know. You, but it, it takes a lot to balance on one. Once you figure out how to get the log rolling one direction and then stop it and, and bring it back and roll it, roll it the other direction, I don't know, it's just a cool feeling. The goal of climbing for girls is to get to 30 feet as fast as you can and for guys to get to 50 feet. I haven't timed myself yet, but that today that was the fastest I've ever gotten to 30, so I really like the view from up top. It's kind of cool. And the spurs are what you like climb. There's the belay, so if you fall, you don't fall all the way down if you can't catch yourself. There's a lot of variety, and that's one of the beauties about the logging team is you don't get this like segregated um, group of individuals that you see in classes all the time. It's a unique mixture. Every quarter you enroll in uh, NR290 is a class. It's one unit, credit, no credit. And all you have to do to get credit in the class is show up and uh, pay your dues, which are $15 a quarter, and that covers everything. The team won first place at the 75th Association of Western Forestry Clubs Conclave this year. Well, I can imagine the rain is probably posing some difficulty for the logging team's practice. Yes, but it does look fun either way. And that new uh, men's soccer coach, hopefully they can get us a win over Santa Definitely. Barbara next yeah, year. Really Looking nice. forward to it. But yeah. coming up, find out what it takes to succeed in a medieval battle. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. I wish I was in school. School ends, but free lunches for your kids don't have to. Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash summer meal. They're coming. Places, everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you.
Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. And welcome back. Uh, I hear there's an epidemic going around on campus. I think so. Ashley DeBren has your Hollywood news. Yep, you guys are right, there is an epidemic. Street Heat is a dance studio that was founded by a Cal Poly student when she was a sophomore. Heidi Azafaziri started the dance studio as a business student in 2009. Street Heat is the only street hip hop studio on the Central Coast that has professional classes with hip hop instructors and contemporary instructors. However, the studio also offers more competitive options. Azafaziri says a dance company epidemic that competes in competitions throughout California and performs in local shows. This is where they want to go after a long day at school or a long day at work. It's just the place to let it all out and that is just an awesome feeling to be able to provide something like that. The Street Heat class schedule is available on their website at streetheatdance.com. On the corner of Oak and Santa Rosa is Santa Rosa Park, where people who drive by may see a glimpse into medieval times. Reporter Michelle Logan shows us how slow Ampgard shows up, ready for a battle. Originally I started in high school, a friend told me what, you know, someone was out in the park hitting people with sticks and I thought that sounded pretty hilarious, so I went to check it out. I heard about it, came out here one weekend and I was hooked after that. I've been part of this group for about seven years now. I thought it was going to be something more like, um, more like, you know, actual swordplay instead of, you know, boxing where you're trying to find your opponent's weak spot, you're fi trying to find a chink in your opponent's armor. You don't just take a shot and then wait to see if it hit. Always, when you take a shot, you know you've left yourself open somewhere, so immediately after taking the shot, come back to defend where you've, wherever you've left over, because that's where the next shot is probably going to come. <laughs> High-level amp guard is very much a game of chess. You're constantly reading your opponent, trying to attempt to guess what they're about to do, and. Uh, employ the correct uh, counters to them. In general, I would say using good teamwork is probably the, the best strategy that, that anyone can, can go with. Um, if you have a team, the more you're fighting together, the better you communicate as a team, the better your, you know, your team will function. If you work well with a teammate, it doesn't matter how individually good you are as long as you work as a unit together you can take out some of the better fighters definitely with some help if you think about it it's just a silly game of tag um, but you also get to hit your friends with sticks and it's really hard not to be entertained by that those who drive by the medieval scene enjoy the show or you can join in on the battlefield saturdays from one to four Cal Poly School of Architecture and Environmental Design is showcasing fall final projects of students all week. Students were given free reign to design whatever they could think of. The only catch, professors would say where the project location would be, ranging from industrial cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco to the dunes at Pismo Beach. Students have spent all fall quarter working on what they hope to show to a future employer someday. Ben Clark, a sophomore architecture major, was assigned to the redesign a set to redesign a center at the Guadalupe Dunes in Pismo Beach. So our project was to redesign that center and put it on the dunes, which is just like the sand near the ocean. And so we had yeah, like six weeks to make a, make a couple sites and then make our building. And then we had a final presentation on Monday. Prior to the assignment, these groups of architects were taken to both Los Angeles and San Francisco to appreciate the buildings in those areas before trying their own hand at designing one. Architecture professors will be critiquing projects through December 5th, and students are welcome to see them on display all over the architecture department. Display times vary, and for more information, check architecture.calpoly.edu. That's all for Pollywood this week. Back to you two on the desk. Thanks, Ashley. Well, Cal Poly Choirs are presenting the annual Christmas celebration, and it is only days away. Polyphonics, University Singers, and the Cal Poly Early Music Ensemble will be performing holiday favorites. Cal Poly's two a cappella groups, Take It Slow and That's the Key, will be also performing on Saturday. There will be discounted tickets available for students. The celebration is this Saturday night at Harmon Hall at 8 p.m. Take It Slow is an a cappella group with a big weekend ahead of them. 
The 17 member or 17 group will perform to raise the holiday spirit, starting with an appearance at Slow Doco Friday at 10 p.m. And the group series has a series of shows that will wrap up their Sunday performance in the Davidson Music Center at 7 p.m. For, For more information, you can check out facebook.com slash take it slow. About wraps it up for us here at Mustang News. Have a great day out there. You can always tune in to mustangnews.net.